everyone, welcome to Car Spectrum. Brandon here. I'm here with my brother Brett and my dad Pat. Um, and this video is to introduce my brother's newest purchase. It's a 1990 Corvette um, that he got for about $6,500. Um, if you guys remember, he bought that uh, 1987 Vette a few months ago for five grand. Um, but he winded up finding this car that was in way nicer shape um, and winded up selling that Vette. He's also a bigger fan of the 1990 uh, interior lift. So that's why he went with this car. So basically, we're introducing the car to the channel, um, showing you the condition of it. I think this car has almost 60,000 miles on it, um, roughly 58 or 59, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, and we wanted to introduce the car to the channel and also show you the differences between a 1990 Corvette and a 1989 Corvette. So engine-wise, everything is the same. It still has the same body for the most part, um, so it doesn't really have those the rounded lights or the squared-off lights. Um, like you see and I think 1991 they started that um, but there is a big difference is the interior that's where we're gonna see most of our differences here so without further ado let's get into his interior so as you can see here the interior is way different than my 1990 um, I'm sorry than my 1989 Corvette interior very very different we're gonna cut to my car's interior so you guys could just see the difference right there all right, guys, just look how big of a difference it is. I know my car is a little bit messy in here. I apologize about that. Um, I have all the digital gauges here, very flat look across. Um, I don't have a glove box as well. So let's get back into his car so we could really point out the differences because we already went through my car. You guys know what this looks like already. All right, guys, so you can see the main difference right off the bat is he has analog gauges which we don't have in the 89, 84 to 89, we don't have this. Um, and a lot of that was due to, you know, um, a lot of the change I think was due to Chevrolet changing um, the technology in the car because to do those gauges were very expensive for General Motors back in the 80s. And they wanted to focus more on performance. So starting in the 90s, they changed the interior, made it a little bit less expensive in here, but especially in 1992 when they jumped up to DLT1, they were able to increase power uh, by putting a new motor in, which you know, still kept the cost around the same for the Corvette, uh, but they lost a little bit as far as interior. I personally think that the early, early C4 interiors are a lot nicer. Um, but overall, this car is a really nice shape, really nice dash. Um, and this was really the only difference between an 89 and the 90 is just the interior. So, I mean, he has a little scuff right here. Nothing too crazy though. Uh, for $6,500, I can't complain. Like I said, he likes this car. Um, he likes this style better than the early C4s. Body of the car, good shape. He's got these uh, real foose rims on there, or wheels rather, very nice wheels. His power antenna still works. If you guys remember his last car, the back carpet was, um, was a little destroyed. Um, this one, the carpet's in great shape. You can see it in here. He's got the floor mats for the Corvette. A um, little, little dirty in there. He needs to, uh, same thing with me. We got to vacuum it out. But me and my brother's schedules don't always line up, so we had a few minutes to shoot a video, so we wanted to uh, put this out there. We've been waiting to do this for a few weeks now. But his carpet's in good shape. His back carpet is also in good shape. If you remember, his 89 was destroyed. So there's a lot less work that has to go into this car. All right. We'll do a motor clip next. You can see how clean his motor looks. All right, guys. So we're back with his um, motor. This is the same thing. It's a 350 TPI. Did not go to the LT1 yet. Um, a lot of people like the LT1, but the LT1 also comes with the treacherous um, OptiSpark, which a lot of people don't like. TPIs don't have that yet. So very clean motor. Um, it's had about 60,000 miles on it. He's missing the cap over here. We're going to try to buy it um, that goes over that over there. Otherwise, car's in pretty good shape. We got to do that cutout for the uh, for the airbox so you can get some more airflow in there. It's a little bit of a performance mod for uh, these TPI motors. But overall, the car's in really, really nice shape. Do another walk around, glance. For six grand, seven grand, I don't think he could get much of a better of a deal than this. Think about it. The last bet he bought was five grand. It wasn't nearly as nice as this. Was it nearly as nice as this? You know, both the cars together again outside body wise nothing changed looks the same i think in 1992 is when they like changed the the body type to give it that little bit of a facelift also you should add in as well brandon that 
with the difference in the gauges, a lot of the reasons, uh, well, one of the big reasons they changed the gauges was to cut costs so they could put more into performance. That's yeah. that's one, and um, and you can and they are interchangeable. You can change, you can make take like the 1990 gauge and put it in here, and it will fit in. And if people have problems with their gauges, there are places that you can send them out and have them rebuilt. Yes, the original uh, 84 to 89 digital gauges. There are people out there that rebuild them. Uh, prices vary between four to seven hundred dollars. I've seen. So really, just wanted to introduce Brett's car um, today. I, you know, we've already seen mine. We already know what what goes on with that. But overall, again, for six, you know, sixty five hundred dollars, this is I think a better deal than the last one he got. And I think overall, this is just a good deal for for uh, a, a C4 vet in general of this condition. Most of these C4s, especially in the Northeast, they're all beat up, they're destroyed, right? People beat them. We live in a salty area during the snow, so they salt and, you know, his don't, underneath is clean too. the low miles on this too. Yeah, 60,000 miles, not quite as low as mine, but still pretty damn low. And he's got the foos, the real foos wheels. These wheels by themselves are expensive. So, that's really it for this video, guys. Um, that's really the main difference between an 89 and a 90, is just the interior. Everything else is exactly the same. No power bumps, nothing like that. Still the 245 horsepower and I think 345 foot-pounds of torque. Anyway, guys, this is Brandon from the Car Spectrum. Look out for more videos because now we have to do some performance mods on, uh, on Brett's car. And then we're going to keep doing mods on my car. And um, we C7 hope you guys are enjoying. The C7 will be back. We're actually uh, in the process of getting new rims for it or new wheels for it because after we bought the, uh, the replica wheels, they cracked again. Um, so even the replica wheels are cracking. So this is Brandon from Car Spectrum, guys. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. We really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, thank you for everyone. I know we just hit over 1,000 subscribers. Um, and I'm really appreciative of that. You know, me and my dad and my brother really love doing these videos. It gets us time to bond and, um, you know, share our love over the Corvettes and get to share, share our love of cars just with you guys. Um, and uh, we appreciate everyone that watches, everyone that hits the uh, subscribe buttons, everyone that hits the like buttons, the comments. You know, even if they're not the best comments, I still like rating them. You know, I love seeing you guys being engaged. So with that said, everyone, again, Brandon from Car Spectrum. Have a great day um, and look forward to more content.